Hello, my name is Luis Felipe and I'm here with Valerio Benedetto uh, for the first episode of a series of vlogs slash blogs about methodologies and concepts of healthcare research. Today, we are going to have a conversation about the qualities. So Valerio, what is a quality and uh, why is it needed? Hello, everyone. Uh, so a quality stands for quality adjusted life here, and it's the main outcome measure used in uh, economic evaluations of healthcare interventions. Uh, economic evaluations uh, typically compares the costs and consequences of competing uh, uh, healthcare interventions. So we can think of uh, two or more drugs or two or more therapies or simply two or more uh, treatments. And uh, the qualis uh, will represent the consequence side of uh, an healthcare intervention. So with qualis, we determine how good uh, an, an healthcare intervention uh, uh, has been. Okay, can you, can you give an example using the qualis on how it helps to, to, to make a decision? So if you have an intervention which uh, yields more qualis than another, then uh, that intervention might be deemed more effective than uh, the alternative intervention. Now, in an economic evaluation, we will also look at cost. So we need to determine the cost effectiveness of an intervention. So we are not only concerned about uh, how many qualities we gain from, from a particular intervention, we want to know what is the cost per additionally, additional quality gained. And that, that's really the, the, uh, the concept that it is, that it is used for, uh, for determining the cost effectiveness of intervention, cost per quality gain. Okay, so, uh... But now about measuring qualities. So I understand that, uh, for instance, so you get the, the, the life years and you, you get some weighting, let's say, for the qualities, so it's quality life years. But it means that you, you need to measure two things. You need to measure how much more is a person going to live with, let's say, some new treatment. And at the same time, how much more quality of life will that person get for that treatment, right? Uh, so it means, in my mind, that you need to measure two things, the amount of years and the amount of quality. So how do you do that? Starting, for instance, with the amount of years, new years gained. Well, years, uh, years gained or life years gained, uh, they're usually measured by uh, looking at a database able provided by the official national statistics in the UK, which uh, provide uh, estimates regarding the life expectancy by age and by sex of the general population. Uh, other approaches might, might consider, for example, uh, um, extracting estimates from uh, uh, studies in the literature where uh, the patients were followed up uh, for, a, for a prolonged period of time. And then you can have a sense of how long the patients uh, uh, lived in each particular health state. So these are kind of the main two approaches to, to extract information about the life years uh, patients live in a particular health state. Okay. Then to the other part, what about quality of life? There are generic instruments which uh, researchers use to uh, describe the health states of uh, patients or individuals in, generals, uh, in general. Uh, one of these instruments is the EQ5D, for example, is a, a quite common uh, questionnaires uh, which is uh, used in uh, economic evaluation to determine the health uh, and related quality of life of patients or individuals. The, uh, the EQ5D is based on five dimensions. So there are five dimensions which try to capture the health related quality of life of uh, individuals. Uh, things like mobility, uh, self-care, usually usual activities, pain and discomfort, and uh, anxiety and depression. This is a generic instrument, so we are looking at generic dim dimensions uh, uh, related to the health-related quality of life of individuals. How do you go from that to the quality uh, so, yeah, life years? That's it. So wh what happens usually is that uh, uh, patients uh, respond to this questionnaire, so you get uh, a particular uh, health state for a specific patient. For example, we can see in, a, in a, this slide here, so, for example, uh, we got a particular health state here, which is defined as 2, 3, 2, 4, 5. So the first number, 2, means we a particular patient score 2 for mobility. Okay, so we, can, we got a mobility with a score equal to mm -hmm. 2. That means that particular patient has slight problems with mobility, right? Mm -hmm. This means we got a description of the mobility of this particular patient 
But we're not only stopping at the description. We need to put a value on that particular uh, L state. In this case, we got a value of 0 0.058. So this is a utility value attached to uh, a mobility score of two. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, I put a one here. So you got one minus 0 0.058. Now having slight problems in mobility means we got a de decrement in our uh, health. So we start from full health, which is equal to one. Mm -hmm. We subtract a value of 0 0.058, uh, which is equivalent to say, uh, I've got slight problems in mobility. So we got a utility mm -hmm. decrement. Which uh, is approximate, approximately 6%. So you got mm -hmm. uh, approximately 6% loss on, on your full mm -hmm. health. That's it. Now, the question is, where am I taking this uh, 0 0.058 from? That's where the valuation com comes in. So usually uh, utility weights values are taken from a, a survey of the general population where the general population are asked to value specific health states like this one, like for example, the health state 2, 3, 2, 4, 5. So not the patients, the, the general population. The general population, yeah. Okay. And in this case, you can look up this value in this value set. So you, you got the different values for different health states. And you know that a mobility equal to two is, uh, uh, is uh, reflected in a utility decrement of 0 0.058. And then you can carry on. So number three, mm -hmm. you go on. Number three means having a, a, a self-care equal to three, mm -hmm. which means having moderate problems which means uh, having a utility decrement of 0 0.08, again, mm -hmm. subtracted from uh, uh, full health, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. So the number two means having um, uh, means scoring two in usual activities, slight problems in usual activities, and utility decrement of 0 0.05. And then the number four means scoring mm -hmm. four in pain discomfort, which means having severe problems in pain discomfort. And you can see here there is a big utility decrement uh, 0 0.276. And finally, the number five means having extreme problems in anxiety and depression. So that's the lowest uh, you can get in a, for this particular dimension. And again, a big utility decrement. And then we, when you subtract all these utility decrements from the full health, from one, you get a particular value attached to this health state, which is 0 0.247. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that person would be like 25% uh, in their health state, would be like 25% of the potential health, health states, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, so just one question. Why is it that you ask the general population and not the patients? Why is that? Because the general population funds the healthcare system through taxes. So mm -hmm. as taxpayers, as contributors to, to the healthcare system, it is felt that the general population should have a say uh, in this uh, valuation process. Now, it is possible. It is possible for patients to value their own health state. Uh, there are methods, techniques, uh, which allow patients to, to value their, their, uh, their own health state. But typically, let's say, it's more straightforward for researchers to look up uh, a particular value for a particular health state in this uh, uh, national value set take this value and uh, and uh, and uh, incorporate this value into the analysis yeah okay just to finalize and assuming i'm not forgetting anything very important uh can you just apply this number then so in this case you have like 0 0.25 approximately so if you believe that some treatment would give that person 10 more years with that state that would be equivalent to 2.5 years of quality adjusted life years, correct? That's that's correct, yes. So in this particular case, like you say, the, that would be the case, simply multiplying uh, this value we get here, 0 0.247, by the duration uh, a person spend in that particular uh, uh, state. state. Mm -hmm. This is another example uh, where we got, for example, two interventions, one for the control group and one for the treatment group. So a typical randomized control trial uh, design. And for example, the individuals in the control group uh, uh, might spend two years in a particular health state uh, with a utility value of 0 0.6. That means they will uh, have 1.2 quality. So it's simply a multiplication 0 0.6 mm -hmm. times two. People in the treatment group, instead, they will spend four years in a particular health state, uh, which gives 
uh, 0.4 as a utility value again 0.4 times 4 1.6 okay and finally if you have the cost of each treatment you just divide the cost by that quality and then you get the cost per quality and then you so, have the number for a potential decision is that so that would that would involve building uh, another concept which is the incremental cost effectiveness cost effectiveness ratio so uh, um, basically subtracting the cost from each intervention dividing that by the qualities from each intervention and then you get uh, your incre incremental cost effectiveness ratio which allow you to determine whether um, a, a new intervention might be cost effective so valerie thank you for your explanation so far but just in quick answer why are the qualities good the qualities are good and are, and are commonly used in, in economic research because they are they're really comparable across different areas like they are based on generic instruments so they're not based on condition specific instruments and uh, the way we calculate qualities by relying on generic instruments like the qfd allow us to compare qualities across different areas that's one of the benefits of the qualities is also another benefit is that qualities are also very intuitive so as you as we, we have seen uh, the steps to estimate qualities to calculate qualities uh, uh, are pretty uh, uh, basic of course there are sophisticated methods involved with that but the intuition behind qualities is is is, is, is quite good so comparability and the intu intuitivity of qualities uh, are two of the main advantages uh, of, of this outcome measure why is that that they might be bad in some cases they might not be so appropriate in some cases because for example uh, qualities rely on this uh, uh, concept that a quality is the same regardless of, of who loses or who gains that quality so you might have a very very healthy person who gains one quality and that quality is uh, valued the same as a, a a person with poor health gaining a, a quality so there's no difference in that another drawback uh, with qualities that uh, for example the way we typically estimate qualities does not take into account uh, other outcomes beyond the patient outcome. So the process uh, outcomes, for example, how the intervention is delivered, whether it is accepted by the patients, healthcare professional, whether it's practical or not, and also trying to capture uh, externalities. So the effects of interventions on other people. So again, the, the qualities are they are typically uh, estimated. They uh, they really concentrate on the on the patients on the individual mm -hmm. cells. But an intervention can trigger effects on carers, family members, mm -hmm. other people. And that that should be something that we need to really take into account in economic evaluation. So these are uh, uh, some of the main drawbacks attached to qualities. Yeah. Which we might talk about a little bit more in some future episodes, let's say. So thank you very much, Valerio. I understood everything. I think it was very clear. Uh, I hope the people that are watching this also understand. If they don't, they can always contact us through the Midas. Uh, so thank you. And thank you, Luis. We'll, we'll see each other in another episode. Okay. okay bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.